Nonviolence does not mean acceptance, but resistance. Not waiting, but acting. It is not at all passive. It involves strikes, boycotts, non-cooperation, mass demonstrations, and sabotage, as well as appeals to the conscience of the world, even to individuals in the oppressing group who might break away from their past. Direct action does not deride using the political rights, the civil liberties, even the voting mechanisms in those societies where they are available. But it recognizes the limitations of those controlled rights and goes beyond. The law is not a holy thing. I remember when Dan Berrigan broke the law and they interviewed his 80-year-old mother and they said, oh, what do you think about your son? He, what do you think about him breaking the law? I guess they thought an 80-year-old woman would have 80 years of respect for the law behind her and she'd give them the right answer. And Dan Berrigan's mother said, it's not God's law. And she had it there. The law is made by very mortal people, very limited people, very opinionated people, and people who have very special interests. They make the law, they tell us what the law is, and then they act as if it's holy writ. A lot of people are troubled by civil disobedience. As soon as you talk about committing civil disobedience, uh, they get a, a little upset. That's exactly the purpose of civil disobedience, to upset people, to trouble them, to disturb them. We who commit civil disobedience are disturbed too, and we mean to disturb those who are in charge of the war. He said at the end of his speech, I remember, he said, now let me address the secret police in this crowd. You agents of the FBI were circulating in the crowd. Hey, don't you see that you're violating the spirit of democracy by what you're doing? Don't you see that you're behaving like the secret police of a totalitarian state? Well, that cost him a bit, I think, uh, the next day when we were sitting in front of the federal building, I have a feeling. Because, uh, again, the police chose in the end to arrest almost no one. They didn't want arrest, they didn't want a trial, they didn't want the publicity that would be associated with that. They only arrested a couple of ringleaders, and one of those was Howard. And so, let the spirit of disobedience spread to the war factories, to the battlefields, to the halls of Congress, every town and city, until a killing stops, until we can hold up our heads again before the world. Because our children deserve a world without war, and we ought to try to give them that. And at that point, the batons were raised, and they began clubbing us very heavily. Howard was pulled up, as I say, his shirt was ripped apart, he was taken away, and I saw blood coming down his chest as he, as he left. Let us be nonviolent. We are going to be protesting against violence. We may break some petty laws, we may interfere slightly with business as usual, but these are not terrible crimes. There are terrible crimes being committed, but sitting down and locking arms, that's no terrible crime. War is the great crime of our age.